Hi guys, it's Mark here from War Factory and today we're looking at a very special episode, at a very special episode because we finally have some news for DAS 9047. So after many, many months of lockdowns, of COVID panic, of all of the stuff of 2020, which I don't want to talk about because let's hope it finishes quickly and we're done with it, we finally have a new wave of DAS product premiering uh, this week at October 8th. Uh, we're gonna have uh, four new items for you, some of them available at web shops, some of them available at the, for, at the retailers, and I'm gonna be talking about these four items today. Uh, in this episode, we're gonna be showcasing them a bit closer, uh, some of the new, new, new miniatures we have for you uh, in this way. Finally, we're back on track. So, uh, without further ado, we're gonna start with the first uh, miniatures I wanna talk about, which is Alex. And Alex is a very special miniature because she was a limited uh, model for every participant of your European Championship 2020, which was held uh, last month at Poland. If you haven't seen, we have some nice photos on our Facebook to, to look at. And uh, Alex, uh, as all uh, exclusive miniatures in Dust that you can get at some shows or at some tournaments, uh, later gets uh, onto the market. And this time, because of the COVID pandemic and because of the dates got so shrinked, a uh, month after the championship, all of you can buy uh, Alex as a web store exclusive. So basically, uh, this model you can only buy at, uh, at Dust dedicated websites. So at War Factor, you can buy one for you. She's a very special hero. Uh, she costs only three health points and she's a hero with fighting spearing and she's a pilot. So that means you can have her in any vehicle you want, especially that she can pilot also an air vehicle, the same as a land vehicle, so she can pilot an aircraft. You can put her inside an airplane, which is very hard to give pilots lately for the Axis or for the Allies. SSU has some, but for the rest it was very, very hard. Uh, Mythos and IGN don't yet have any aircraft, so for them it's less of fun. But basically what she does is, is she makes a lot, a lot of very interesting vehicles much, much more interesting. So for now, let's say uh, we have the new Allied planes with phasers. Uh, we have the new Allied planes in Marines versions. So now you can have a Marines uh, bomber or rocket pelican. Uh, uh, with fighting spirits, so he, they only have the amount of uh, ammunition they bring with them for the rockets or the bombs. So once per game when you use these bombs or rockets, you can have them attack and hit on crossers and on factions. So that's super, super powerful addition to any vehicle, especially to aircraft that needed uh, this little boost for just simple free points. And that's just great. And uh, also if you don't run aircraft, she can pilot any vehicle. So for example, uh, the new uh, E-15 coming next month or the Bulldog Six Shooter also coming next month or some of the older vehicles. So for example, you want her in a Desert Scorpion Jeep that uh, you have a Gregory and Izzy in one gun truck. In the second gun truck, you want to have her. Then you have two very powerful vehicles that can do a lot of damage. So the combos are limitless. And I think everybody who plays Dust needs that miniature. So that's Alex, a Webster exclusive for Dust 1947 this year. She was supposed to be show exclusive. So if you go, for example, to Essen or to Gamma or uh, to Hamburg for uh, Tactica or to any other event that we were at, then, okay, you can buy her at her booth. But COVID 2020, there are no shows. And we don't know when the show is going to be back, to be honest. So uh, we decided, it was decided that Alex is now a web Webster exclusive, so everybody can get her. You don't need to leave your house. You just go to www.warfactory.eu, click Alex, buy, ship, we ship, you get it, everybody is happy, and we uh, make this little money to help us strive this year, 2020, it was to the worst, the worst year, so please 2020 end in a nice way, and let's hope that Alex helps all of us, uh, you know, keep the struggle. Okay, so the next step we're gonna go, so before we go to the main course of uh, the new SSU vehicle and the new Marine, uh, mercenary infantry, we're gonna go to the Altar of Cthulhu, and this is a giant, giant terrain piece. It's the, I think it's the, one of the biggest terrain pieces we have. The desert buildings are similar in size, but this is, this is just giant, super, super big. And it's very, very high quality altar. Basically, this is what this is, a very big altar for four fields. So it's a center of a big battlefield. It's, a, it's the Cthulhu shrine you're fighting for. It's the place uh, that your special ops teams need to go in and eliminate the Rasputin that is uh, making a sacrifice here. If you look into the details, you can see that there is a sacrifice table here. There are special places where the 
you know, the stuff that goes out of your sacrifice, we're not going to get into details here, pours into uh, some c c channels here and gets to this big Cthulhu um, st statue in the middle. And you can see on the corners, you have these places where you're going to lit fires uh, to make this even more creepy and even more cultist-like. So it's very, very cool piece, very nice looking with a lot of added details to the uh, elements you see. So anybody that needs a centerpiece, because this is going to be hard, this is going to be the centerpiece of your battlefield. Uh, if you need that, this is the best way to go and it's, as usual, super high quality, that's studio terrain resin. Okay, so that's the new terrain. Uh, now let's get uh, to the uh, creme de la creme of these releases. So uh, two new uh, two new units, one for the SSU, for the block and for the factions of the SSU, which is the Spetsnaz, uh, the PLA and the block of the uh, Sino Soviet Union, is the PT-47 and it's C, D and E because it comes in three versions, but you have uh, how much cards? You have seven cards inside because you get one for your block version, you get free for the PLA and free for Spetsnaz. Sorry, Red Guard, like you had a lot of love with the Steel Guard starter set and army box, so for now, uh, here we support the normal people. The Steel Guys needs to, needs to wait a bit. And what is super special about this is that uh, it brings the first artillery barrage uh, unit to the Dust Universe. The Artillery Barrage is uh, aimed to uh, simulate how Katyusha and Nebelwerfer and other unmanned big uh, field coverage rockets worked. And with this special ability, you can cover up to six fields with one artillery strike. The cost of this is that you do not uh, have the ability to shoot again until you have a special action that allows you to reload a uh, once per game unit. So for example, you need to have a command squad or maybe some uh, kinky mercenaries to help reload these weapons. And the Katyusha, so the PT-47C comes in versions for Spetsnaz, for the block and for the PLA. And you're gonna have this nice artillery piece for just nine points. The range is 418, so there is a lot of range, and there are two explosions against infantry. So remember that there is it's an artillery weapon, so uh, there is no infantry saves. So if you have three, four units cramped up somewhere on the battlefield and suddenly there is a rain of Katyushas just killing everyone because there's no cover, there's no infantry save, whatever is hit it's dead. So you need to be very, very careful. And it's pretty cheap for nine points. So it's a very good and very important addition to any SSU army. Now it's gonna start competing with Red Rings. So we're gonna have these tough decisions. Do I want to have one Katyusha, maybe two Katyushas instead of two Red Rings? Or maybe have one Red Ring which can shoot every turn. I don't need to spend my uh, precious officer actions to reload, but Katyusha is much more powerful. What do I take? What do I do? So there's a lot of decisions here to make very interesting addition to the SSU army and of course there's a heavy machine gun here so instead of the red rains uh, let's say infantry weapons you could use to shoot the enemy now we have this uh, machine gun to help you there is a lot of decision making here it's armor free uh, move is 2-5 so not super armored not it's a bit on the fast side as all PT-47 these are just you know tracked vehicles that move pretty fast so a lot of decisions for the SSU players here uh, nice addition is that you can have it as a dedicated PLA vehicle PLA still needs a bit of love so I'm always happy to see uh, some more vehicles for them, so great for the Chinese guys. Spetsnaz, they already have a lot of stuff, so this is just a nice addition for them to have. So, uh, the Katyusha, 9 points, very useful artillery piece, uh, very interesting to use, uh, for sure, very good for the factions that do needed to rely on block weapons so far for the artillery support. Now you can have your own Katyusha, uh, or maybe two or three even, if you're a bit crazy, and the tough decisions. Do I reload? Do I take more officers to do that? Do I take some mercenaries to do the reloading? Or do I just one shoot it and then drive straight onto the enemy and shoot with my machine gun? Who knows? Who knows? So there's a lot of decisions here. Okay, so let's let's leave the Katyusha, the iconic weapon of Soviet Union in World War II, and let's get to the two other versions, uh, which only serve the PLA and Spetsnaz block. So uh, this is going to be interesting for the PLA and Spetsnaz player, or if you run a mixed army, which I always encourage, you can have all of the units you want, so you can run of these in, in one of your mixed armies when you don't care about this bond. So there are two versions, the rocket and missile pod versions mounted off on top of the PT-47. As you can see, there, there is a simple system of removing the, let's say, Katyusha. I want to have my uh, missile or rocket pods. I just put them back here and it's done. And if, of course, if you want, you can magnetize it so it's faster and it's a bit more secure, but still that's very nice and fast way to replace your weapons. Okay, so let's go to the uh, second version. So we're gonna start with the cheaper one. For 10 points, you can have the missile version. 
in PLA or the uh, Spetsnaz uh, factions, which is the PT-47E, and it got Salvo Missile Pod ability, and the Missile Pod is a range 12 weapon with two explosions against everything, and a lot of damage against airplanes, because these are dedicated uh, missile pods to shoot down airplanes. So imagine, you know, a hail of rockets going into the sky and exploding, uh, sending shrapnel everywhere, trying to destroy these pesky airplanes. So if you use Missile Pod on Salvo against the most common Armor 2 uh, vehicle, you get eight dices, each of them doing two damage and you can sustain that. Of course, you need to reload afterwards because you used Salvo, but still, that is probably a killer for any vehicle that hasn't much, so it doesn't have the improved aircraft save, just the normal save. So if you need a little bit of anti-aircraft power, which was not so easy to get because either you had some not super good walkers or you needed to go big to get the tank or go for the uh, babushka matryoshka which is hard to get now so a very nice interesting counter to what i mentioned earlier so with alex we're gonna see a lot a lot of aircraft on the battlefield that's my opinion we're gonna see more helicopter armies for the SSU, we're gonna see a lot of phaser or bomber pelicans for the allies, we're gonna see a lot of more Falke and other Axis uh, aircraft on the battlefield and now the SSU gets a new uh, anti-aircraft piece. So that's an interesting combo. So do I bring this and get ready for the aircraft that are coming or do I stick to Katyusha version? Or maybe I need both of them or maybe that's my third option. So I have two Katyushas and one anti-aircraft uh, barrage missile pod. Who knows? But these are the options, and of course you can use this against infantry. Two explosions at range 12, that is still, for example, for six men, five men squad, these are uh, 12, 10 dice, that's a lot. And you can just sustain them without using salvo, so that's pretty universal, I like it. Especially the option that you can shoot the aircraft for 10 points, very good, I will stick with it. Okay, so now let's go to the final version, so the PT-47D, which has phosphorus rockets. Phosphorus is a special weapon that was brought into the game with the Japanese units that burns for a while when it is on the ground. And now we have uh, rocket pods that shoot into an infantry and set that place ablaze. So uh, whatever happens when there was an infantry there, they need to leave because when you cross or you end your activation there, you're gonna get burned. So not only you get hit a lot by two explosions on range 12 from these rocket spots, but also you need to leave it. That's also an interesting way of uh, making some uh, narrow passages secure because for two turns, anybody that moves through gonna get burned. So it's easier to shoot somebody there, leave the flames and just block this way of going in. So an interesting support weapon, a bit less versatile than the missile pods and of course not artillery, so something different than the Katyusha, but an interesting addition and especially a tactical advantage to use when you want to block something off or eliminate some infantry that on a strong point, you start burning it, they need to move out because they're gonna start getting hurt. Uh, a lot of interesting choices. Okay, so that was the PT-47, the new version, the support weapon version of the of the tank and now we go to the creme de la creme so we go to the mercenary multi-option infantry squad why this is so important because this is the first infantry squad in just history more than 10 years of the game that you have multiple versions of the same squad in one box and more than five six miniatures so you get a very very big amount of miniatures because inside you have seven different miniatures in one box and these miniatures all bear different weapons but hey, does it mean there is a seven uh, girls inside? No, that means you kind of have seven different versions of the same squad to use, and it's gonna be up to you which one you want to use. But with one box, uh, you will be able to field three of them, uh, and with two boxes, you're gonna be able to wield seven different versions of the same squad. And if you do it right, you're gonna be have two. You have two boxes, and you can have two different squads uh, from the seven different options you can have here, and from the big amount of seven miniatures you have inside. So this is a bit of a revolution because instead of having seven different infantry squad in our offer, which is of course a big burden for a warehouse, for the stores and for you to buy to have all of these. You just buy one box or multiples of one box to have these different squads you can use. And this is a very good step in everybody's opinion. Everybody loves that. There's this meme, everybody liked that, yay! So yeah, I love it. Everybody likes that because the quality of the miniatures you can see is also much better than what we used to have in the old, old days. As you can see, this is always improving and these miniatures are really, really good. So you're gonna be really happy with the quality of the miniatures and you're gonna be happy with the fact you can have seven 
seven different options of uh, unit in the same box. So uh, let's start with them. Let's have a look. So the cheapest one is only five points. So always, it's always nice to have a cheap infantry unit just to fill this. Oh, I have this five points left. What do I stick? Do I stick this or maybe I use the mercenary sniper squad? So basically all of these squads, uh, you have a leader with two Thompson SMG. This is a very distinctive miniature and Thompson SMGs are always nice because they have a big range of four, not big, but they have a medium range of four, which is already pretty good. They can hurt armor four at two dice, which is always useful. And then in all of these squads, we're going to have a different mix of assault rifles or heavy weapons. So in this cheapest version, we have two assault rifles and two sniper rifles. So this squad is going to be probably most useful against specialized armies, like uh, some marines where you have a lot of flame for infantry or maybe the recoilless guns you want to eliminate quickly before they start doing damage. And very useful against the pesky steel guard because you have one slash one there is no safe against the uh, sniper rifle only the damage is island so this can be a very nice way of countering the red guard uh, steel guard units so if you know you're gonna be facing steel guard it might be worth taking one or two of these squads two sniper rifles is hard to get lately apart from the new upcoming uh, sniper uh, team for the IGN or two sniper guys for the uh, Spetsnaz. The rest of the armies only have one sniper teams or squads with one sniper, like the recon squads for the Neue Deutsche Afrika Corps. So a very nice option against some specialized armies and against the steel guards for mere uh, five points. Now, if you want to swap one of these sniper rifles against an to, to an assault rifle to have a little bit more firepower at range four and still be able to eliminate these pesky guys or maybe eliminate an officer somewhere in the back or a flamethrower operator for one point more you can swap it uh, to mercenary battle squad and then have two free assault rifles two thompson smgs and one sniper rifle uh, next then we take a big step up and we switch the sniper rifle to the rocket launcher so to the uh, figure faust which are now available to the mercenaries and everyone in fact and the figure faust is a very nice weapon and for these two points more we get uh, five slash one against infantry one and two four slash one against infantry three and three slash one against infantry four so pretty big damage it can damage up to armor three of vehicles so that's useful but it's not gonna be killing the vehicles but it has very good anti-air statistics so if you're not sure if you're gonna be fighting the enemy infantry or maybe there's going to be some flyer to take care of this is a nice addition and for eight points you're going to have this uh figure faust in your army manned by a by a nice guy here and maybe this can be useful to you uh, it's worth to mention that all of these squads that i'm describing have two slash four move mod traits so nothing special just the usual and armor one so they're easy to kill, they're not super fast, but thanks to their diversity, thanks to the amount of different options you can use, everybody's gonna find something for them here. So, next we uh, switch to the mercenary battle squad with recoilless rifles. The previous one was with rocket launchers, now we have with recoilless rifles, and it costs the same 8 points, but you switch the Frigger Faust into a recoilless rifle. So instead of having some this of AA option and some salvo abilities against infantry, we have an explosion against infantry. There is a grenade, which is quite important because not all recoilless rifles have the grenade ammunition so this one has so when you shoot infantry they lose their cover which is very nice when you combine it with the explosion of the statistic and you can damage some light to hit for hitting heavy targets maybe if you want to aim for the critical hits but one two against armor four and five one one against armor six seven that's not the best way to kill the heavy vehicles maybe cripple them a bit but still this is mostly an uh, anti-light uh, vehicle unit and of course Instead, you can use it as a support unit with the with nice addition of the explosion and grenade. Next, for nine points, we have two uh, Frigger Faust in one squad, and it becomes the mercenary anti-aircraft squad. And anti-aircraft squad is a very good option for anyone that will be struggling with those airplanes. I'm expecting to see with Alex and with the new Pfizer allies. And for nine points, instead, for example, of taking the mentioned previously SSU anti-aircraft vehicle with a lot of range of course because that was 12 here we only have six on the figure faust locket launcher you can still have a nice support unit to to counter the enemy flyers and you still keep the two assault rifles and two thompson smgs from the leader so that's nine points in mercenary anti-aircraft squad then for 10 points so that now you can see the differences here so one recall is one figure faust it's similar but Two recoilers, it's a bit different weapons output than two anti craft squad because recoilers also have a bit bigger range, eight fields instead of six from the figure faust rocket launcher. And the recoil cipher, we have two of them here for 10, 10 points. So two assault rifles, two Thompsons from the dual wielding 
uh, super officer and two recoil rifles to counter the enemy uh, infantry and enemy vehicles. Very good unit, uh, very useful to harass enemy infantry at long ranges with this grenade recoil rifle ammo or eliminate enemy light walkers or maybe those PT-47 that are coming down the pipe for the SSU so this might be a nice counter to them too. And the last, but not the least, the most expensive, the Mercenary Heavy Weapon Squad. So here you have two Frigger Faust, two recoilless rifles and two Tom and one uh, sniper rifle, sorry. So there is only specialized weapons here, nothing normal. The highest range from all of these versions because you have eight on sniper rifle and eight on recoilless and six on rocket launcher. So if you're uh, defending, let's say in an open field, you need to have a long range weapons to eliminate enemy infantry because before they come close or uh, you wanna have a something universal that can both tackle the enemy light armor and enemy aircraft, this is for something for you. They cost 11, which is a bit expensive, but the variety of weapons and options you can have on the battlefield is very good with this squad. So mercenary heavy weapon squad for 11 points and that's all folks. As you can see depending on which heavy weapons you want to take you might need a second box so to have two recoilers or two Frigger Faust uh, operators in your army but basically a great box and based anyone who plays Dust needs at least one of these because there is so much option, so much addition to your army building and things you can do with this squad it will be a waste not to use them. Okay, so that is the uh, autumn wave for 2020 for Dust 1947. I hope you like what you've seen. I hope you're going to buy them either at our web store warfactory.eu or at your local European store that we uh, supply. Please help the local stores because they also have tough life if, in 2020 because of the COVID, because of the close downs, lockdowns and all our uh, bad stuff that happened. And what can I tell? Thank you for watching and see you next month in the next wave of releases for Dust 1947. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye bye.